test the difference between an inertial frame and a freely falling frame. And now let's see how we can take it a step further. The strong equivalence principle applies the same constraints as the Einstein equivalence principle, but allows the freely falling bodies to be massive gravitating objects as well as test particles. Thus, the strong equivalence principle applies to objects that exert a gravitational force on themselves, such as stars and planets, black holes, and Cavendish experiments. I alluded to some of the results of this just a bit ago as part of the Einstein equivalence principle. This does make it a bit fuzzy between the two, and clarifying exactly what a non-gravitational experiment truly is does come up as a matter of debate among physicists. For this purpose, the strong equivalence principle, in order to have gravitational interactions explicitly obey the universality of freefall, local Lorentz invariance and local positional invariance creates the strongest possible restrictions on theories of gravity. Namely, the strong equivalence principle requires that the gravitational constant be the same everywhere and every when in the universe. The SEP then says there are no other forces other than what we've already discovered. There would only be gravity, electromagnetism, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force. These are the only allowed interactions of matter, and this is the standard model. That's what we mean by the statement that the strong equivalence principle is incompatible with a fifth force. Like the Einstein equivalence principle, the strong principle requires gravity to be geometrical in nature, but in addition, it forbids any extra fields. Therefore, the metric alone determines all effects of gravity. Why? If an observer measures a patch of space to be without curvature of any kind, then the strong principle suggests that it is absolutely equivalent to any other patch of flat space elsewhere in the universe, and else when in the universe. Matter in all flat spaces in the cosmos for all time behave and interact in exactly the same ways. Einstein's theory of general relativity, even including the cosmological constant, is thought to be the only theory of gravity that satisfies the strong equivalence principle. There do exist a number of alternate theories, such as brands dickey theory and the einstein ether theory. These theories add additional fields and state that the metric is not the sole determining factor in the free-falling movement of matter in space-time. Also, like I stated earlier, grand unified theories that combine electromagnetism, the weak nuclear force, and strong nuclear force with gravity in some way, as well as quantum gravity theories, all require additional fields in order to couple space-time itself to phenomena that would then eventually violate local Lorentz and positional invariances. For the rest of this course on Ryden's introductory cosmology, we're going to work inside a physics framework of the strong equivalence principle. Amazingly, that's all we'll need for almost all studies of the universe that track its evolution and fate from here to the wildly unforeseeable future. It also takes us all the way back to the first tiny fractions of the first second of the universe's existence. It also works for more mundane things, like your GPS system and local satellite orbital mechanics. Adding in quantum gravity to our study of classical relativistic cosmology will only get muddled by such considerations. However, once we get into the realm of the inflationary epoch and inside the first second of the Big Bang, we will need to return to this topic again. In general, for everything we'll need, we'll encounter in cosmology, we'll likely use the strong equivalence principle. A big caveat is, of course, the current debate over the Hubble tension. This may promise to see violations of the strong equivalence principle by introducing new physics evident in the observation. But that's for another day. For now, let's look at a bunch of examples and thought experiments about the equivalence principle so we can get a good feeling for what it means.